Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Linus Wamanya. Um, I'm in charge of projects at Afro Jungle Initiative. Um, our role as Afro Jungle is to empower the communities in East Africa through the software, both uh, the software skills, capacity building, and training. So our 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 focus for this uh, presentation is going to just to showcase what exactly we are doing. Uh, the opportunity we are seeing in terms of the supporting the community and engaging them through empowering them with the tools and the knowledge as part of uh, Python the Software Foundation. So um, we have three people here. We keep rotating. Uh, this one knows this, the other one handles this, and uh, along the way we'll be able to get few few feedback from you. So I'm going to hand over the mic to Joshua, who is going to take us through. Uh, our initiatives, uh, so that you people you can get to know what we do. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I'm called Joshua. I'm a co-founder of Afrojang Initiative, uh, and our work at Afrojang is to promote Python and uh, related technologies in East Africa. Uh, the background of, of uh, Afrojang is um, we started as a meetup, uh, and as a a meetup for developers uh, to discuss uh, give, uh, given problem sets uh, regarding Python programming and other related technologies. Uh, as uh, people got interested in what we were doing, our community started to grow. Then we moved into establishing an initiative of helping uh, other people learn uh, Python and uh, other related technologies. Um, we are working uh, with universities and uh, secondary schools uh, in East Africa and we are the regional ambassadors of Python Software Foundation for East Africa. Um, the way we, we promote Python is really simple. It is through training and capacity building, mentorship, and uh, software development. Um, actually, we are among the key players in promoting technology in East Africa. Um, if we look at our vision and mission, uh, our, our vision is to build a generation of uh, Python develop developers who are capable of creating an impact. Here we mean uh, we are training people to use uh, Python to, to develop projects and products. Unlike other programming languages, Python is very powerful uh, in very many ways, be it uh, in education, uh, in medical, automation, uh, manufacturing and production, uh, robotics, uh, internet. Uh, actually, we are in a revolution of where we use internet to do a lot of things, and Python is really good at that. That's why we really encourage a number of people to learn Python. Our vision is, our mission is to use uh, the Python programming language and related technologies in East Africa. Actually, we encourage a lot of people to join us. Uh, that's where that's where we go to secondary schools universities and uh, other tertiary institutions uh, to introduce Python to them and uh, to, to help them include Python in their curriculum. As you know, uh, universities in East Africa and other secondary schools are promoting technology in different ways, but uh, the number of Python users is not so high in, uh, in our region. That's why we normally focus on taking Python to secondary schools and other institutions. Instead of like waiting for them to look for us, we just take Python to them, to their academic institutions, so that they include it in, in, in their teaching curriculum. And uh, we are happy that uh, people are responding and uh, they're liking it. Many universities are coming on board and uh, other secondary schools, and really we are getting uh, good feedback and uh, making some impact because now we, are, we have projects we are working on. We are helping them to build a number of applications, websites, databases, uh, and the sorts of like that. Talk about emissions. Our training process. Our training, we, we make sure that uh, we design a training process which is simpler for academic institutions to adopt. Uh, we start with uh, reaching out to them. We go to, for example, we go to the university, we show them how Python is good, uh, we, we, uh, we talk about uh, what they can use Python for, then we assess their needs, 
and introduced Python to them. Uh, once uh, they, we got a, a positive feedback, we, we initiated the training. We, uh, we organized training together, which can suit in their curriculum. Uh, after the training, we award, and then we, we also carry on follow-up training. Uh, we, don't know, we, we, we don't stop our training. We help students work on their final year project, for example, at the university, to build products using what? Python, and to work on different projects using Python. Um, our training modules, uh, in East Africa, uh, if you look at people who, are, who have access to computer, actually the number is not, is not too big. And the reason why we initiate our training with uh, the first step of uh, digital literacy is to first help people learn how to use a computer. I, actually, they learn how to use, to use a computer to, to do basic stuff, like browsing the internet, um, typing and uh, doing a lot of word processing and so on. Uh, the next step is uh, introduction to Python. Those are the different levels uh, which we use to train people. We introduce them to Python, and uh, after the training, we award them with a basic Python programming uh, certification. Uh, the next level is uh, intermediary, uh, where people who have, uh, who have acquired the basics now learn to use Python in building websites and uh, different applications. Uh, then the, uh, the next level after the intermediary training is professional. At this level, we work with a different organization like uh, Hyperion Dev. I think people from South Africa know Hyperion Dev. Who knows Hyperion Dev here? Ah, yeah, yeah. They are our partners in helping uh, our trainees certify professionally at the professional level after they have completed all the, the levels. Think about African by kids. Talk about by kids. Actually, uh, our tra uh, during our training, uh, we started as we, as I said earlier, we started as a, a meetup where our professionals would meet and discuss problem sets. After receiving uh, people who are interested in Python, we decided to to go abroad to to go train them at the universities and high schools. And uh, one of the programs under the uh, one of the programs we are running is a uh, Afropy Kids. Uh, this is a program for high school and the youth, where we engage, we engage them into Python training. Uh, we have the after class program for them. After attending their ordinary classes, uh, we normally invite them to get at least some basics in Python programming and digital literacy. We have the weekend program. You know very well that on Saturdays and Sundays, school don't normally operate on that on their normal curriculum. So we invite these students at their school to attend our training. We, are, we also have holiday programs where we invite students during their holidays to come and attend at our centers. Yeah, we also train refugees. Actually, this is part of our inclusion. You know, Uganda is hosting over a million refugees from different neighboring countries which are affected by conflicts. And one of our role, we see Python as a way of uh, helping rehabilitate these people and uh, to help them get jobs in different countries. So we work with uh, refugee camps. Uh, for example, there's Rhino. Uh, we go and train people from the Rhino camp. We go to Rampenja, Rampenja camp. We go to... We also have a center in the city. You know, some of the refugees are settled within the urban areas. We have, we, are, we have opened up a center at the Employment Bureau, which is uh, run by the Kampala City Authority, and we're inviting these refugees to come and uh, get the best training in digital literacy and uh, Python programming language. Yeah, the state of refugees in Uganda. As I said earlier, Uganda is hosting over a million refugees, and now our target is at least to train a thousand refugees every year so that they can get uh, basic digital skills and uh, Python programming to be able to get jobs in their host countries and maybe when they are repatriated to, uh, to their home countries, they are also able to get employed and earn a living.
when they go back to their countries. Python uh, for, for people with disabilities. I'm going to handle that. And to remind you, my name is Abwembo Murshid Kasule, Honorable. I'm also the, the city representative of people with disabilities in Kampala Capital City Authority. And then I'm also the communications and advocacy manager for Python, rather for Afro Jango Initiative, East Africa. Uh, with this, we are looking at inclusivity for people with disabilities, for people with intellectual and physical disabilities. And in this, we work with various schools and organizations, among them which is Kampala School for the Physically Handicapped, and then Special Olympics Uganda. And the aim of this is also to introduce digital literacy to people with disabilities and people with intellectual disabilities. Because we, can, we, found, we found out that uh, these people have got warming ability to, to perform tasks and duties. But in most cases, they are not able to execute most of those duties because of their disabilities. But we believe ICT and using Python as a programming language, uh, it can also work as a rehabilitation tool. Because if we can teach a person with disability how to or use a, a, a WhatsApp on, on his or her phone, let's say somebody is deaf, he can be able to communicate with anybody at ease. And then we also feel that as we train people with disabilities through uh, with ICT skills, they can be able to, to earn a living when he's maybe he's at home or anywhere else. So it's another initiative that we've come across as uh, the, uh, uh, the Afro Jungle Initiative. Our impact. Uh, since we started Afro Jungle, um, actually Afro Jungle started as a meetup, uh, but after seeing the possibilities of uh, engaging more people into programming and uh, software development using Python, uh, we began rolling out programs to different uh, institutions. Uh, since uh, 2015, we have trained uh, in uh, over 1,800 people in basics. This is computer literacy and basic uh, programming, Python programming. Uh, then the intermediate level, we have trained uh, over 800 people. Now these 800 people know how to build a website using Django. They know how to build a database. They know how to, to code, actually. They know how to do, best, to do things using Python and, uh, and related technologies uh, for the 400 people we've trained, at least they have completed the professional level. They are, they are certified. Some of them are working with Andela. Others are working as lecturers at different universities. Others have started up their own companies in ICT. Others are working with ministries and uh, different organizations. As, uh, as well, they are working as uh, volunteers with us to, to help train other people in Python. Uh, six, uh, 16 academic institutions across East Africa have hosted our training and uh, they are really working with us and uh, inviting us to train more people. Uh, four academic universities have adopted uh, Python in their training curriculum. Actually in their curriculum, and this is a Macquarie University. Actually before they were teaching Java, C++, C Sharp, Python had uh, the lowest number of, uh, of uh, people who knew Python at the university. Now at the College of Computing and Information Science, we decided to advocate for Python and we, we show them how Python is good and easy to code. So now they adopted it. Um, no, no, wait. Uh, University of Jigali also has adopted Python and uh, in, uh, Kampala International University is also one of the universities that have adopted Python. Actually, our trainees have worked also on different projects and they are, they, are, they, are dip, they are different products which we are developing uh, so that every trainee, uh, after completing the different levels of training, you are able to contribute to a given project. Be it uh, on web, there is a project which uh, every trainer has to contribute towards too. And uh, other ideas are coming up as well. Yeah, software development. 
At Afro Jungle, we, we are, since we are teaching practicals, we normally uh, give a chance for our trainees to, to learn the real development of different products. And one of the projects we are developing currently is the automation grid. This automation grid is a, is a project which we are using to help save energy. For example, we have the lighting system here in the building and uh, we have the ACs and uh, stuff like that. We use this automation grid for people to log on to and then control uh, electrical appliances at their home remotely using their mobile phone so that you don't have to worry about uh, how, the light, how the lighting is going to work when you're, not, uh, when you're not at home. You just use your phone to switch off maybe the security lights, to turn, off the, to turn on the, uh, the security cameras and even the ACs when you're, when you're not even around. Uh, we have the online uh, learning platform we are working on, which is going to help our community learn virtually. Maybe when I'm in Uganda, I can teach someone how to program when he's in Rwanda or South Africa here. And we have the office assistant. Uh, we are also trying to, it's also aimed at uh, trying to solve uh, the problem of uh, delays when you're making official, official appointments. Maybe I want to see the minister here. I just log on to a system, I put in my request to see the minister, then they schedule for me a what? an appointment. Instead of coming and then they tell me the minister is not around, you will come back tomorrow or any other day. I just log on to a system, uh, I, uh, then they, uh, they schedule me an appointment with the minister. I come on that very day when I know that I have a meeting with this person. We are working on that also. We have an online market for programmable hardware. As you know that we have a problem, of accessing this hardware which we are using in Python. For example, the Raspberry Pi, they are very hard to access in East Africa. So we are developing a system where we're going to, where people can access them and buy them at a lower cost. Uh, some of the development centers we are running, actually these universities have provided us uh, the space. Actually it's a small space, it's not a big space but a small space with computers and uh, internet access where we train our students and they are normally, all the centers are normally open for everyone who wants to learn Python. Uh, most of the people who use Python at our centers are the final year students who are working on their presentation and projects. Uh, Makere University, we have a center there. Kampala International University, we're running a center there and it's ever open for anyone who wants to learn Python. Chambogo University, we have a center and uh, University of Chigali, we are also working on establishing a center for anyone who wants to run Python. You find our trainers there and mentors to help you. Uh, let me call on uh, another presenter to handle this. Yeah. <coughs> hello, hello. I think, um, you know, like in every organization, you can't do it alone. And I think in technology, you're aware that through collaboration, we make things happen very quickly and very easy. So um, at Afro Jambo, we work with a uh, uh, key player there who supports our initiatives. Um, if you look at the, the, the foundation itself, uh, helps us with finance uh, to make sure that we reach out to all the communities around the East Africa. Um, we are also given as mandates uh, to make sure that we approve any project that comes within East Africa that champion and accelerate the, the software uh, objectives. So we're in charge of making sure that all the community is growing through them. Um, if you look at Python everywhere, uh, anyway, I mean, they also support us with the uh, tech tools uh, to make sure that our advocacy is very well championed. The jungle sometimes gives us funds get some funds, but it takes some time for us to get approval of the funds, but nevertheless, it's always helping us to make sure that the agenda is very well amplified. Uh, if you look at uh, the Special Olympics, I think, I don't know if anyone in the room knows about Special Olympics. Has anyone knows about Special Olympics? Yeah, that's true, yeah. Uh, Special Olympics uh, is um, a movement uh, registered in New York. Um, its work is to make sure that it uh, brings inclusion of people with intellectual disability through the sports. Um, uh, currently, we're the first people in uh, Uganda using the sports uh, uh, 
our Special Olympics Uganda office to make sure that we bring the digital literacy to these people with intellectual disability. So uh, what we do with them is to make sure that we train them the basic, the basic tool uh, of digital literacy. You know, these are the kids uh, sometimes because we involve in a lot of sporting activities across the world, and um, in some scenarios, I've been traveling with them everywhere we move, but these kids, uh, sometimes they can reach and just stay on the projector to see what's this. So, uh, but these are very stubborn kids. Sometimes we tell them, let's move, they say no. We first want to know what's happening here. So what we are doing is to make sure we tell them even this is a phone, and this is how you can hold it. This is how you can switch it on, because these are very delicate kids we work with. So we are the first people in Uganda to make sure that we bring this project, uh, train them, train the, the parents because they're managed by the family, and to empower them. So through them, uh, they're helping us to make sure that our advocacy goes across the continent, and we're glad that they are on board. Um, if you look at ICT Innovators Cooperative, um, we are the founder of the ICT Cooperative Bank, uh, this is uh, actually the membership driven saving scheme that brings the people in ICT and technology together to save the funds and be able to give the members those little funds based on their saving scheme. So um, we are the founders of this kind of initiative. Uh, so I was talking about the ICT Innovators Cooperative Bank uh, that we started as initiative with the ICT practitioners across the continent. We are currently registered in Uganda. We are in South Africa at Midrand. We are in Nigeria and in Kenya. So what we are doing, uh, through the membership, the pool of the members we get, we train them the coding skill through the Python programming. So uh, these are some of the core players that help us to move and advocate our work. So. Thank you. For me, I'm going to talk about Kampala School for the Physical Handicapped. This is also a special school for people with disabilities. And uh, we partner with it in, in the sense that it has an accessible lab. And it also happened that this school is where I and Joshua started, though they are, we are different years, but we started from that school. And then it's uh, our core area whereby it's like when we talk about ICTs and people with disabilities, it's like anybody with, with that school, they will know that it's possible and it can be done. And we are also proud to inform you that we are, we are the ones that developed their website and upgraded it to a very good website where they, even people can um, do things like uh, if somebody wants to go and volunteer at that school, um, they, they can just uh, go on their website and then link up with the school. We are so proud of it because it acts as our trial area, and also we are one of the direct products of that school. So we are working with it in that sense. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, we know these are the participating universities institutions that we work with. Uh, you can see their logos are there, and the number keep growing day and night. Um, through this kind of uh, champion we're doing, we're able to bring all these universities together and the numbers keep going. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, of course, we are just on board in Tanzania, Burundi, and South Sudan, and soon, and we may want to make sure that all East Africa is covered and we are represented. Okay. Um, if you look at our recognition, uh, over the years, uh, we've been recognized for our work. Yeah, the Python Software Foundation recognized us the regional ambassador for East Africa for the work we are doing. Uh, the Ministry of ICT recognized for promoting digital literacy among people in Uganda. And the UCC and uh, ITU recognized us for advocating for social inclusion in the ICT sector, where we are encouraging people with disabilities to join uh, the ICT programs. And then you also have Kampala Capital City Authority. Um, that's um, a body that governs the capital city of Uganda, Kampala, where I also happen to be one of the, the political uh, head representing people with disabilities. And then at KCCA, we also have um, an employment bureau, which is under the directorate of uh, 
gender and community services. And um, we are in full control of it because even when I was away, I was appointed as the chairperson of the gender committee. So I think it's um, a special recognition because they're also going to be providing us with, um, with uh, a training center because they have um, a, a, a very good lab, computer lab, and then are, we are working uh, tooth and eye to see that we work together with them. And then we've also got um, special recognition by the head of state, the president of the Republic of, Kampa, of Uganda, uh, after having seen our, 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 our endeavors and uh, our selfless efforts of promoting ICT and practical skills. So some, those are some of the recognitions that we wanted to share with you. Uh, let's talk about how we are, how, what will make us super. Uh, we, are, we are really working to strive that we see uh, more people on board. Uh, we want to intensify the capacity building and training to all universities across East Africa and uh, other academic institutions. Uh, we also, uh, Yeah, we also try to help people to get access to tools uh, and products. Yeah, for to tools and products uh, which uh, Python developers could use. Uh, uh, there, there's also a need for us to have uh, good internet connect connectivity and uh, tools like Raspberry Pi and other sensors are very hard to access in East Africa. So we also like to see that our people have access to all these tools. We also want to establish a, like a, a full stock resource center for our developers. Uh, we all know that our number is growing day by day, so we need a, a full stock resource center for to accommodate our developers and uh, people who would like to learn Python. We also need more partners on board. Since uh, we are growing, we cannot uh, achieve the best alone. We need more partners. Academic institutions are uh, supporting partners, support our activities, uh, financing partners and uh, volunteers to come and help us reach a milestone of uh, more than a million people uh, trained in Python programming across East Africa. Uh, this is our team, you can talk about our team. Yeah, um, of course, um, I'm Linus. Um, I'm a liberal person. I'm, I'm advocate of open data initiatives across the continent. I'm a co-founder of the ICT Cooperative Bank that we are championing across the continent. I'm passionate about the ICT and helping the startups grow. So our niche is very liberal. Yes. Um, Kato Joshua, I'm a tech enthusiast. I'm a developer. I have an experience of uh, programming for more than six, five years. I'm the director of a Young Initiative and uh, we are the ambassadors of Python Software Foundation in East Africa. I'm Bwembo Murushid Kasule, Honorable. I'm um, a disability rights advocate. I'm also a communication specialist, both in ICT and I'm also a trained journalist. Um, I believe that as we call more people on board, guys out here, I implore you to join us so that we, 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 we work towards taking Python to the ground for the solving of the community-based problems, coming up with solutions that will make Python a world leader. I thank you very much. Uh, we have also another member who is not present with us. Uh, he's called uh, Mr. Buembo Ismail. Buyondo. Buyondo Ismail. He's uh, the head of our training program. I, see, uh, I think some of the people here knows her. She knows about her. She's from Uganda. She has ever interacted with her and is helping us to promote Python everywhere. Currently, he has some duties. He's performing in Rwanda. He has moved to Rwanda to make sure that uh, the University of Chigali hosts uh, uh, a conference on Python. Uh, we are also having um, like six other administrators and 20 trainers and uh, five advisors uh, in, our, in our Python community. These are our contacts. Our website, our Facebook uh, Facebook page, and uh, the WhatsApp number. 
yeah, we thank you so much for listening to us and uh, we are really looking forward to working with you guys in building the Python community across Africa. So the questions are welcome. You can ask us anything you want uh, to know about our community in East Africa. Thanks very much for the work you're doing in East Africa and Uganda in general. Uh, you being uh, ambassadors for PSF, uh, I just have one question for you. I run PyLadies in Kampala, and I would love to know uh, that what would be the role of PSF to communities like us? Um, how, can, how can PSF be of help to communities like us? Other than funding, you know, that's all we know. So what else could we benefit from PSF? Thank you. Uh, of course, if you want to know the role of the, the PSF to, to, to the communities in Uganda, you have to first know why they are funding you. Actually, the PSF is funding us so that we can uh, train people to use Python technologies in our region. And what they expect out of us is to build the capacity of computer programmers who are able to build products using Python technologies. That's their main objective, why they are supporting us. And I think it's part of why the, this conference is here and other conferences are yet to happen across Africa. They want our community to grow, to have developers who are capable of creating an impact in our community. That's why they are mainly finding us. They want our community to grow and to be able to create an impact in society. They want us to build products. Firstly, uh, I want to commence on the work you're doing. Thank mm. you for traveling all the way mm, to enlighten you. us of, of, uh, of what you're doing. Mm. Um, I just want to ask, who is, uh, it obviously takes a lot of infrastructure, a lot of uh, you know, computers and stuff to, to do what you're doing. Who are your main uh, contributors to this? Who, who provides all these hardware for you? Um, <clears throat> I think the question, I, I think the question was, who provides you with the majority of your like hardware and support and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think mm, the biggest, our biggest funders are, are, are two: Py Python Software Foundation, and then Django, Django Initiative. Those are, are the biggest are the biggest um, funders. And then for us, we use a system. That's why we started with universities, because most of these universities have, uh, have, uh, have computer labs. So we always look out to an area that has got the computer labs, and then maybe they can allo allocate us time. We've been so lucky that uh, the universities that we've mentioned, and then including um, uh, Kampala Capital City Authority, and then uh, and then Kampala School for the Fiscal Handicap, they have labs. So as we identify people that would like to train, then we also consider having the um, people that are having the infrastructure. Mm. That's how we do it. Maybe if Joshua can add on something. Basically, that's how we do it. Basically, that's how we do it. And uh, some of the money we use from our funders and uh, 
people in our community who are contributing to us, we use it to buy things like Raspberry Pi sensors and other stuff like that. But we normally go to places where people have computers and probably internet access. And sometimes uh, even the foundation itself uh, facilitates uh, the internet provision. They give us funds to, to get internet and uh, to, to do a lot of work and uh, to transport our trainers to different places. But we consider mainly people who have the infrastructure. Because for us ourselves, we cannot uh, like, uh, carry computers and go to a place and invite people to come. Okay, guys, I'm afraid we're going to have to call it here. We are out of time. Um, sorry, I know there were more questions, but we, we need to move on. Otherwise, we're going to start holding up other sessions and things. Thank you all for coming, and thank you very much to our speakers. I bet you adieu. <laughs>